Agora TV. The world is thinking. Um, on the other hand, a um, large, large percentage of uh, human beings on this planet, not just in Western culture, but uh, all over the, the world in many, many cultures, um, feel very strongly about the accuracy and the truth of revealed knowledge. And uh, in many cases, this revealed knowledge um, does conflict with what we know of empirical, empirically based knowledge, which we believe is more reliable. A good example is the Krishna consciousness movement. The Bhaktivedanta Institute has very specific views about the relationship of the sun and the earth and the moon. And they believe that the uh, relationship is that the Oh, I didn't see that. They believe that the sun is closer to the earth than the moon is. So the relationship is first the earth, then the sun, then the moon. And as a result, they reject the idea that there was ever a moon landing because it would simply be impossible for the astronauts to have gotten all the way to the moon if they... If the sun is 93 million miles from Earth, the moon must be further than that, and it would just take a, a terribly long time to get there. So the moon landing had to be a hoax. And they, they claim this based upon revealed knowledge. Let me just pull out this uh, paragraph for you so you can read it. We have information from a very reliable source, the Sanskrit Vedic scriptures, that the so-called astronauts never actually went to the moon. Although most people hold it as an article of absolute faith that man first reached the moon in July 69, the manned moon landing is actually a colossal hoax. And let me pull out this paragraph for you as well. Why do you accept the popular version of the manned moon landing? Because you believe the authority of the scientists, the journalists, and the politicians who propagate that version. When we cite Vedic scriptures which state the astronauts could not have gone to the moon, we are simply favoring another authority. You got your authority, we have our authority. I would like to suggest that actually the authority of science is a little bit different from that. I mentioned before that if Steve Weinberg says something about quarks, I'm very much inclined to accept it. But it's not the same way as the Vedic scriptures are accepted by the Krishna uh, consciousness folks. I know that there are other people who have checked Weinberg's work, and that Weinberg didn't just wake up one morning and say, quarks, <laughs> and write his paper and win the Nobel Prize. Um, it took a while to sort of work out all of the pieces and that this was a process that he, he followed a process that scientists understand to come to his conclusions about quarks. And the process involved a lot of testing and a lot of analysis and a lot of logic and a lot of empirical evidence and so forth. I know other scientists have, have checked that work and I know I could also check that work myself because he told me what process he used to come up with those conclusions. Now, it'd take me the rest, of the, life to, the rest of my lifetime to learn the math to do it, but I could if I wanted, right? And that's the difference between accepting Weinberg on quarks and accepting the Vedic scriptures on the position of the planets.